What's going on, everybody? We are back here at Natty State Sports Headquarters. Some are calling it the Sports Media Palace of Mid-America. I'm joined by my good pal, my comrade, Scotty Bordelon. We are here. It's a 1-0 day here at Natty State Sports because Arkansas finally won a basketball game against Texas A&M last night. We gave you a lot of pregame content, some postgame. You know, these Curtis Curtis Wilkerson and Scotty Bordelon cranked out a really good podcast at the Palace, as we call it. Um, it was a productive night. I know you're probably tired of hearing us talk about the Texas A&M Aggies, but we're going we're gonna to close the chapter here one last time. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a second look and dive deep into some of the you know, biggest aspects of the win last night and give a put a final pin in this monumental game for Arkansas, which did it save their season? We'll see. People, so far, people yes. Are people are saying. I mean, it's, it's keeping them afloat. They're at least above water for the time being, which is all you can ask for. So, uh... We're going to dive right into it. We're going to take a little bit of a closer look at this Arkansas win, 78-77 at the buzzer. Iconic win from uh, from the Hogs. Iconic performance from Tremont Mark. Yeah. One of the most fun we can remember. And, uh, Scotty, let's just jump right into it. You noticed uh, Arkansas's ball movement was a lot better in the first half. They finished with eight assists in the first half, finished with 10 total. Yeah. But I felt like that starting lineup really set the tone. What were kind of the biggest takeaways you had from some of your your data and research throughout the game? Yeah, so last night, I, I talked about this a little bit. I'm going to try not to be too, you know, I'm not going to try to duplicate too much, but track potential assists during games, shots defended. I thought the potential assists were really interesting. I had 27, Arkansas had 27 last night, so they had um, 24 potential assists that led to field goals, and then they had three more that led to trips to the free throw line, which th- which those are those are valuable too, but Arkansas was, I think, two of six on those free throws. Um, off a of, off of potential assist, but seven of 19 from three. And I think anytime you see Arkansas sharing the ball, um, you know, like that, like, I feel like if you're you're sharing the ball and your, your three-point attempts are assistable, you know what I mean? I think that's, you know, you're bound, you're bound to feel like to get better, cleaner looks. Um, seven of 19 on those, which I, I thank God for calculator, 36.8%. That's up from what Arkansas's, you know, season average is. Uh, so I feel like that that's a pretty good number. Three of five on on twos. And I think one of the misses was a was it like a Keon Minifield lob to Trevin Brazil that I think just went went in and out. So easily. they haven't they haven't quite perfected the Trevin Brazil lob yet. Yeah. There's been some awesome <laughs> dunks. But take a second look I, at all those. I, I, we were talking earlier. I think they take ter- Trevin Brazil's athleticism for granted a little bit. They throw those lobs just like for throw it to the top of the backboard, <laughs> and, and they're like, just so come good. down with it, just do it. Um, so, yeah, I think they had two lob dunks, but they could have had five, four or yeah. five, it felt like. Um, yeah, another thing that stood out was just Chandler Lawson. He had eight potential assists. Arkansas was two of five on threes that he set up. Uh, really good distributing the ball from the middle of the floor, I thought. Uh, one of his early assists, um, you know, he put the ball on the floor, and, you know, he had options on either side of him uh, with guys crashing from the corner, and he found Devo for, you know, a little short floater. Um, assisted on a couple of threes. And then Makai Mitchell had one potential assist in the game, and it led to a three-two. So you're you're talking about your um, your big guys, you know, assisting on um, you know some some big buckets and looking just looking for guys. I think that that's important because you know we were in here last weekend watching the Florida game, and Makai Mitchell catches the ball, you know, around the right elbow, and he just starts putting the ball on the floor and just trying to go to work instead of you know potentially looking for somebody else, you know, to, to get a better shot. Um, Mentioned it last night too. Tremont Mark did pass the ball. He did pass it. He did not finish with an assist, but he had six potential. And I think it's just it's just a case of just guys not knocking down shots. Yeah. But I mean, I think that's like the only category last night that you can look at and be like, you know, he didn't contribute there, but it wasn't for a lack of trying, which is exactly why, you know, I like to track this stuff because you can look at a box score, see he went for 35 on on 15 shots or whatever. Um, and he he was you know offensively his game was going, um, but you look at that box and you're just like man he didn't pass the ball at all yeah. he he did <laughs> the guys just did knock down shots hey, and credit to that because I I said it on the post game reaction show last night with John I was saying I I don't even really remember times where it was, it was there was there was stuff there so I'm glad you were there to fact check me and uh, let us know that Tremont Mark did pass the ball a little bit and uh you know one guy that I think was huge in this whole thing was L Ellis who yeah. finally we've been calling for it the thing I loved is he played 31 minutes. And we really got to see him cook for a little bit. And I think that what he brings, you mentioned Chandler Lawson making some of those really nice passes in the middle of the defense. Something about L. Ellis, he's he's a good driver of the basketball. We've seen him penetrate and get to the rim. 
I just feel like he has a knack for getting to the middle of defenses and kind of breaking them down. And he forced, you know, I don't, th- I don't even know if he had an assist in the first half when Arkansas had eight, but I felt like he was the one who was kind of setting that tone. And, you know, he had a few hockey assists and kind of getting that ball moving. And, you know, we, we, we talk about Eric Musselman loves to say that their goal, I believe is 200 passes. Now right. we have it on good authority. Our sources have informed us that they, they fell just shy of that 200 number. Yeah. 195. Yeah. And yeah. I think a little bit of that comes due to the second half. There was a, there was a little bit of a, a dip there in the ball movement. Part of that is Tremont Mark was cooking. And when Tremont yeah. Mark's cooking, you just let him go to work. And so maybe that, that had a little bit to do with it. Uh, I believe Arkansas scored 46 points in the first half and then only 32 in the second half. So there's a little bit of a right. little bit of a dip there. We saw them revert to some of their old characteristics, but I think that first half, uh, seeing that progression with that ball movement and seeing some of those guys like Chandler Lawson, like L. Ellis, who we've been kind of beating the drum for. It's nice to see them make us look good for a little bit. Uh, it, it, guys like Keon Minifield too. Like yeah. I, I had him for for three potential assists, and two two of them were actual, and they led to six points. He yeah. set up a couple of threes there. Um, Arkansas also did not turn the ball over while Keon Minifield was on the floor. True. Yeah, it was only like 11 minutes, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty good run from him. I mean, when Keon's on the floor in SEC play, I mean, you can just bank on it. Teams are going to try to go at him. I mean, I had... I mean, he played, what you said, 11-plus minutes. He defended five shots. And so okay. it was it was almost certain that, you know, whenever he was on the floor, whoever had the ball in his hands... When he had four was, fouls, gonna, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Defended five shots, had four fouls. Yeah, so he had action-packed minutes. Like, that's you can almost guarantee that. <laughs> Little laden blocker numbers. I really <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. On Going back to L for a second, I, I mentioned to Curtis last night. I think sometimes he, he struggles with, you know, maybe finding the best ways to manipulate a ball screen. And that led to at least one of his turnovers last night when, they, when A&M sent that soft trap at him. Uh, I think he had a turnover doing that. But whenever he's able to – you know, just get to the middle of the floor and compromise the defense. He can get to the rim. You know, he's kind of saucy with the with the the finishes and that kind of thing. Um, and he loves to to leave his feet and make passes. And you know, a lot of times he he finds guys wide open. Yeah. You know, he does like to leave his feet without a without a real plan on what to do there. Yeah. And uh, you know, we talked about L, and we're giving him this praise. He also was three of eleven, and some of those finishes at the rim, he couldn't quite get the roll. And you know, right. I, I liked what I liked his aggression. I didn't think it was a bad three for eleven. Yeah. Um, but you know, we were thinking about it. Tremont Mark scores 35, and so you see Arkansas wins 78-77. You do the math, you're like, okay, they had one guy score half their points. Like, is that a sustainable thing? But when I look at this roster, I see, you know, LL went 3 for 11, had 15 points, but went 3 for 11. Caleb Battle did not play a single minute. We have not even mentioned his name yet. You didn't get, like, a Pete Trevin Brazil outing. Devo was pretty good at seven points, made 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 maybe one three. Uh, You know, he played his minutes there, but it's not like anything – Outside of Tremont Mark going for 35, which by the way, we've seen him do before, so he might do it again. But it's not like Arkansas did anything last night that was like unsustained. I think there's also plenty of room for improvement there. And so uh, offensively, I'm definitely encouraged with what I've been seeing from this team. Now, going to the defensive end a little bit, we talked yeah. about some guys like L. Ellis and Chandler Lawson who really stepped up and, and provided some help here. You know, all offseason, Scotty, all we talked about, all of us smart people and you know, we, we tried to act like we know what we talked about. And we're saying, hey, Tremont, Mark, and Diva, that's going to be such a great defensive backcourt. Hadn't exactly been the case, and not just for those two guys, for all. anybody. And uh, last night, it seemed like, again, not a perfect defensive performance. Arkansas gave up 45 points in the second half. But it seemed like their their effort on that end was a lot better. And, uh, you know, at least contesting the shots, one thing we talked about coming in was that A&M likes to rebound their misses. Arkansas didn't rebound all the misses, but they sure did force some of those misses. So, what what yeah. uh, what what did you make of Arkansas's performance on the defensive end for last night? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I said it on the maybe the post game show and then the pod with Curtis, but Mark, I had him unofficially gave up three buckets on 16 shots defended, um, <laughs> had three blocks last night. So it wasn't just like blocked he was, a three from he Wade was Taylor, just like man. getting a hand, getting a hand in the eye. Like he was, you know, he was legitimately blocking shots. Um, I pulled up his Ken Palm page. A little bit ago so last night he tied his career high with three blocks and he also had three blocks against georgia he's got seven blocks in his last three games is tremont mark is he maybe starting to come around on the defensive end is that a development that maybe we need to you know pay a little yeah. bit closer attention to well and it's interesting because like you know coming into the year i didn't expect tremont mark to be the leading scorer for arkansas and the kind of go-to creator offensively so the fact that he's had this defensive emergence while he's also picking up a, a huge, you know, load in the scoring department and right. really just the ball handling in general, 
hard hard to complain about anything Tremont Mark's doing right now. And look, yeah. there, every now and then he likes to take those mid range shots that I don't love, or he takes some weird possessions. He's and, getting a good whistle. But you know, night. with a guy like that, you just got to let him cook. You know, and I, I'm I'm done trying to nitpick the guy, man. He's been awesome, and he brought out a lot of that dog that Arkansas has yeah. been. Man, you know, must talk about swagger. I think Tremont Mark embodied that a little bit. Same yeah. with Devo Davis. Uh, you know, I don't think Devo. This wasn't like a you know, I, I predicted that Devo would have a couple of like vintage plays where he's like stealing the ball and going coast to coast, but he didn't have anything crazy. But I, I liked what I saw from Devo and the way that he moved with a purpose on both sides of the ball. And defensively, did your did your data back up that Devo looked like a little bit, a little yeah. bit of a better Devo? Yeah, for sure. I had him again unofficially giving up three buckets on twelve shots, and I think the bet the best area that he contributed defensively last night, I had him giving up one made three on nine defended. A and M was putting up some threes, yeah. boy, especially. Wade Taylor. Um, and it's it's good to have, you know, Devo's, I don't know what his wingspan is. I'm not I don't have the game notes pulled up or whatever, but whenever he's he's near guys, he can disrupt, he can disrupt some shots. And you know, Wade Taylor probably took he did take some bad shots last night, but Devo probably impacted, you know, yeah. quite a few of those. And I also thought that that Devo did a really good job of not dying on those ball screens or getting clipped by those. He, you know, he fought through them really well. And that I think that made a pretty big difference too now we talked about some of the good stuff that arkansas did and we you know we praised them for making some strides in the ball movement we liked the rotation we, we saw plenty to see there but the one thing is the rebounding was something we, that we knew was going to be an issue yeah. uh and it was an issue can we go ahead and say r.i.p to the small ball lineup is it is it time to go ahead and uh go ahead and and shut it down like that I, but like you're not gonna the thing is i think you can continue to play it but you got to pick your spots because yeah. not every team that you're going to play is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. Yeah. And so it's like it's Eric says all the time it's about matchups, right? So I think there's I think there's gonna be some some time and there's times and places for for that lineup to to live on. Well, you know, above all else from this game, I think the biggest story, big picture, if you will, moving forward is that Arkansas went back to the basics with their starting lineup. They went back to the lineup that started the year, the lineup that beat Purdue, the lineup that I guess not to beat Duke. They had a different starting lineup for Duke because Mark was out, but right. a lineup that kind of we thought was going to be the group coming into the year, and now we've made it all that we've we've cycled through all the options and we're back to square one here. Um, but that lineup last night, that starting lineup with L. Ellis, Devo Davis, Tremont Mark, Trevin Brazil, and Chandler Lawson, they played 16 minutes and 18 seconds together. Might not sound like a crazy amount of time, but for one lineup, and you know, I don't think there was any other lineup that was even anywhere close didn't to that. Play more than five minutes. No other lineup did. Um, and yeah, so they outscore A and M thirty to twenty four in those minutes. You know, not like they took their lunch, like they were dominant. But uh, I think that group is that that's that's telling that Arkansas was able to finally find a group that they could roll out there. And we saw them do that in the second half. I believe it was the Abilene Christian game where they just stuck with one lineup the whole time. Yeah. Um, we'll see if this continues because again, we've seen this happen before. But I th I thought it was really encouraging to see a group that we've seen before and see them really get that chance to work out those kinks in real time. And so now we actually have something to evaluate with this team, which makes me really excited because I'm I'm tired of talking about hypotheticals. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I having said that, we're about to talk about some hypotheticals, Scotty, because we're going to talk about the upcoming three games here on the schedule. So Arkansas's next game is Saturday at home against South Carolina, who dropped 13 spots, I believe. They dropped, two, or dropped 12 spots in the net last night after losing to Georgia. But still net number 67. So it's not like a not gonna be a signature win for Arkansas. And A and M dropped from forty one to forty four after after losing to uh, to Arkansas. Um, so it's not like it's it's a massive game for Arkansas, the South Carolina one, but another chance to kind of notch that resume and get something going. Yeah. Then right after that, it picks up. You go on the road on Wednesday to Ole Miss, who's net number fifty two right now, been hanging, looking like a potential tournament team. Yeah. Chris Beard, in tough twenty five. Right, and then you have Kentucky next Saturday at home. RPI or RPI is not a thing anymore, is it? I don't think so. It's just RIP to R RPI. <laughs> um, but I believe Kentucky is 18 in the net. They've they're top 20 in like every metric. Just lost this A and M team, but still one of the top teams in the SEC. So this three game stretch right here, it's kind of you know we're not in like must win territory or like they got to go three and zero. But you know what? What are your when you look ahead to this three game stretch? What are you really what's what sticks out to you and just what are you expecting here? Man, I think it's. On Saturday, you just you've got to take care of business. Like yeah. South Carolina didn't hold serve at home, lose to Georgia, your, your net drops, right? And so Arkansas has got a very winnable game Saturday. Uh, South Carolina obviously is is talented. They wouldn't have the record that they do. Were they like fourteen and three at this point? I think yes, that's right. That's correct. Um, but Ole Miss, you know, we can get into this in a minute too. Joe Lenardi put out his latest, you know, by conference 
here's who's in the mix. Here's where people stand. <laughs> I know it's whatever, whatever today's day is January 17th. And so yeah. I don't know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. But Arkansas is being considered. Yeah. Well, we asked yesterday, we were like, when is Joe Lenardi going to mention Arkansas? And like, not like we're not doing the thing where we're like, you know, the national media doesn't want to. Arkansas shouldn't be being mentioned by national right. prominent people, but it's nice that Arkansas is now there. They're in, you know, I, I think yeah. of it like the NFL playoffs when you see the graphic and it's like in the hunt. Right. Arkansas is in the Arkansas hunt. Arkansas in the hunt officially <laughs> again. Which yeah. is a step because literally this time yesterday, Arkansas was very much on the outside looking at it. And they're sure. still on the outside looking into the NCAA tournament. Arkansas is now at 110 in the net. They went from 113 to 110. I thought we'd see a little bit bigger of a bump there, but uh, so still plenty of work to do. But like I said, this three game stretch is huge. And Scotty, yeah. call me crazy. I think I would rather see Arkansas beat Ole Miss on the road than beat Kentucky at home. I know fans are going to hear that and they're going to go crazy, like, oh, no, we hate Kentucky. We want to, you know, I'm not talking about from a rivalry standpoint. I'm talking about just when I'm trying to buy into this team, big picture moving forward. It would be really encouraging to see them go out on the road away from home and beat a quality opponent. And Ole Miss yeah. is that. You know, obviously Kentucky's higher up in the net and the rankings and stuff like that. But I think going out there and on the road and adding a something like that to your resume just makes you a more you, you look like a serious adult at that point. When you have a real yeah. win away from home. I mean, you beat Stanford in the Bahamas, who's like they're kind of in that 70 to 75 range of the, right. the the net rankings. I think Arkansas getting a win against Ole Miss not only would get them to above, I guess. It would be three and three in conference play if they were to beat South Carolina and Ole Miss. But I think that would kind of solidify this team a little bit and get everyone to realize, hey, the, everything that Arkansas wants to accomplish is still right in front of them. Whether they do it or not, who knows? But I think this three-game stretch, we're going to learn a lot about this team. There's there's no doubt. And it, as that Lenardi update was as of 11-16 Central. So take that for what it's worth. But like I, I went and looked at you know that, that list that Lenardi put out and I wrote down where Arkansas's next three opponents are. So you got South Carolina's last four in team. And so you're really, you're, they're still projected to be in the tournament. Eh? Yeah. So you've got bubble against bubble right now against each other on Saturday. And then Ole Miss right now projected as an eight seed, or he's got them projected as an eight seed. So, you know, if, or it was AM in that, uh, are they projected in Ole Miss was, or um, AM, I think was a, I may need to go back and look, but I think they were in the like that five range or gotcha. something. I'll have to go double check again, but Ole Miss is projected as an eight as of right now, and Kentucky is a three. And so, like, you've got some opportunities. Technically, three to, NCAA tournament games yeah, coming to add, up right to here. To add to your resume, and, you know, I, I think the the Ole Miss the Ole Miss game would be really big. Like, if you could win at Ole Miss, um, not to overlook South Carolina, but I, I think that that's maybe more exciting because of maybe the momentum that you've got going into a weekend home game against Kentucky. I think you'd still rather have the Kentucky win because it's mm -hmm. splashy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Kentucky is one well, from a fan experience. And I mean, the, as far as the, fun comes, like the beating Kentucky at for home. For me, is the eye test, right? Kentucky's, Kentucky's talented as all hell, man. Like that, that, that group. I don't know that there's another team in the country maybe that has more pros on its roster than Kentucky right now. You beat that team. I think you, I think they're you back to doing that. You remember they went a few Even years if you lose on the road a few days before. Yeah. Well, and if you lose that Ole Miss game, then all of a sudden, if you're able to beat Kentucky, that kind of gives you a little bit of rebound. You would still be in a good situation there. But, you know, like we said, we're going to learn a lot about this Arkansas team. Scotty, we've we've talked all we can possibly talk about the Texas A&M so. I'm sick of talking about those guys. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear Wade Taylor's name for at least another month. Um, anything else you want to add before we close the book officially on the Texas A&M Ags? No, I think that's it. I think that I think we second look, last look. There you go. Good with it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this the, We're one to know in the Natty State sports era. Everyone needs to remember that, that this is all these issues that this Arkansas basketball team had. Not all it took point. was two days on the job, and all of a sudden, this, this is the NCAA tournament team. We're clearly back on track. So uh, I'm sure everything is going to continue according to plan, and there's not going to be anything crazy, to quote my my my, my boss, John Neighbors. Um, But, yeah, we look forward to watching this story unfold, and we're, we're going to continue to have – all the coverage possible, everything you could imagine, pre, post, in between, during game, whatever. Content's about to ramp up here at Natty State Sports, so stick along for the ride with us. We appreciate you joining us.